Manchester United then take on league leaders Leicester City. And Leicester look like they're almost there. Uh, with Tottenham slipping up uh, against West Brom, a win over Manchester United will crown Leicester champions. Jesus Christ, who would have thought that? A f even a few months ago, I would have laughed if so anyone had said that to me. But we've got to stop Manchester, as Manchester United, we've got to stop the party. We've got to stop them winning it. I was just looking at the fixtures and it was unfortunate for, Manchester, for us, Manchester United, that Tottenham don't play till Monday against Chelsea because I was hoping that this would be a dead rubber for Leicester because this is going to be a really difficult game for Manchester United. Even though it's Old Trafford where uh, in recent games we've been in, in decent form at Old Trafford, haven't dropped too many points at home for a while. But if this had been a dead rubber for Leicester, they wouldn't have given a shit about it. But they have got to, to go out there and get the three points to actually seal the title. Whereas if Chelsea had been playing Tottenham uh, on the Saturday or even earlier on the Sunday and then and Chelsea had got a result against them, then we would have been, if Chelsea had beaten them, we would have uh, known that the title was already won. Leicester might have relaxed a bit and it would have, might, have, might have helped Manchester United. But... It's not to be, we've got to, uh, to go into this game and try and get the three points because that top four race is still very slim. The only thing that gives me hope in this top four race is the fact that Manchester United have never really been out of it. We've always just been there uh, a few points behind and every time we have a game, I think this is the game where it's going to be the final nail in the coffin and we're not going to get that top four. This is where we're going to completely blow it. And... We seem to pull a result. Louis van Gaal, the cunt, seems to pull a result out the bag every time when he needs a result badly. You see, so many times against Arsenal, against Liverpool, Manchester City, so many times he just pulls a result out the bag. I don't know how he does it. And we seem to just cling on to a, slight, a sliver, a thin bit of string that we're still in that race for the top four. Uh, obviously, it should give us a massive lift that we've uh, got through to the FA Cup final to play Crystal Palace. But um, I want to know your thoughts. Do you think if we win all four games, we will actually get the top four? Because I've just been looking at the race, and if we win all four games, we've got to rely on Arsenal or, Ch or Manchester City losing a game because of our stupid, really bad goal difference. We're 12 goals uh, difference behind Arsenal, which we're not going to catch that because we'd have to score a shitload of goals. And Arsenal are going to have to lose at least one game now. If they get seven points, then we've had it, to, to be honest, uh, uh, from Arsenal anyway. So Arsenal obviously have got to play Manchester City, so we've got that real chance there that um, if Arsenal were to lose that, I think Arsenal are in the worst form out of the two. So if Arsenal were to lose that, we would then have to win all four games. <clears throat> the only thing is with these games, I'm not too sure... Uh, that we can win all four of them. And if we drop points in one of them, then either Manchester City or Arsenal in their remaining three games are going to have to probably lose or lose one at least and draw another one, which looks uh, very unlikely to me. But going into this game, I wouldn't expect Louis Van Gaal to make too many changes to the lineup. Um, we were a lot better, I thought, in that first half. Uh, the front, the front uh, few players... Uh, starting to progress in their careers now. I think they're start. I mean, they're still young. Uh, Jesse Lingard's still only 22, and out the front three uh, attacking options that we had <coughs> against Everton was the uh, experienced of the well, the older of the three, Martial being 20 and Rashford being 18. So, but I think uh, the it, it's a real promise for Manchester United that these three players are getting better each game. I know Jesse Lingard's quite wasteful. Uh, with his final ball and his uh, shooting, but all three of them are improving, which is great to see. And at the start of the season, we were so slow in attack. Uh, obviously, Rooney's lost a yard of pace and he was further forward. We were just so slow. Now we're so much quicker in our attack. Uh, we're looking to, to, I mean, pace is so important in the game. Uh, you see how quick Rashford and Martial are up front. And it's a joy to see. And obviously, defenders hate. Uh, attackers with pace and we just didn't have that earlier on this season just too slow you you can't play this slow uh, that we were in the Premier League <clears throat> so I wouldn't expect him to make too many changes I would like to see Darmian come in uh, in the defence uh, Darmian at right back and I'd go probably Rojo uh, I'd like to see Cameron's balls with Jackson actually at left back uh, instead of Rojo 
Uh, you know, I didn't think Fosa Mensa had the best game uh, against Everton. Just bring him out of the team for now. He's still only young. Uh, and Blinden Smalling, uh, uh, the centre of back. But Cameron Borthwick, Jackson really does need to come back in in that uh, in that back left back position at some point. He was he was decent before he uh, got injured and then uh, went in the reserves. But we've had a whole week's rest this week uh, in terms of um, uh, games. So hopefully he can come back in, into the front uh, there. Um, I'm. I'm expecting him to put Fellaini in there, but I would go for Herrera and Schneigen. Neither of them started that game against Everton, so I'd like to see both of them. Nothing wrong with Carrick and uh, Fellaini. They both did decent in that game, but I'd like to see some change there <coughs> in that midfield. Now, obviously, we're going to see Jesse Lingard um, and Martial either side. Um, probably Wayne Rooney in the number 10 with Rashford again up front. They've all had a week's rest, so I can't see why Rashford will need to get rested. One matter didn't play... Uh, start the game the other day and I think he has gone off the boil a bit and I wouldn't really bring him back into the starting lineup um, now maybe bring him off the bench but uh, it will be interesting to see what happens with uh, with one matter next season if Jose Mourinho is confirmed but the big news obviously is Jamie Vardy's out uh, injured um, sorry banned for this game uh, so that does help us um, because he's scored so many goals this season uh, there but they've got some other quality players Riyad Mahrez uh, and Najawa scored, both scored uh, in their win over Swansea. I was surprised that they won 4 0 in that game. So, Ajoa, a player that has scored against Manchester United before, could cause us a lot of problems uh, in this game because he's going to obviously be taking Vardy's place. They've got Okazaki up front who works really, really hard. And uh, Riyad Mahrez, player of the year, absolutely fantastic season, but involved in 46% of, uh, of Leicester's goals this season, which is absolutely fantastic for him. He causes all sorts of problems. Hopefully Chris Smalling and Daley Blink can be on their toes for both of them. Because uh, we did get caught out a bit with Lukaku in that game uh, against Everton, which we didn't do when we previously played Everton. Uh, and we don't want to get caught too... Well, certainly don't want to get caught on the counter-attack, which is why I'm pleased that with uh, Vardy's pace, we could quite easily have um, been caught out on the counter-attack uh, in this game. But luckily he's banned for this game. Uh, which does give me confidence going into this game that Manchester United hopefully can get a positive result. I'm worried that it could be a 1-1 draw in this game. We've been good lately, but I can see uh, a draw coming at some point out of these next four games, which probably, I personally don't think we're still going to get the top four, which is a shame. It's top four and the FA Cup. Then saying goodbye to Louis van Gaal. Thank you for what you've done. You've helped us back. Would be great. And then bring a new manager in for next season. That would be absolutely fantastic. But unfortunately... I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's probably... We might scrape this uh, victory in this game. We've still got West Ham uh, and Norwich to play, which uh, Norwich are both fighting for their lives. And West Ham still uh, clinging on to a hope of finishing fifth or fourth. So that's going to be difficult. The Bournemouth game, they've got nothing to play for. So I would expect us definitely to beat them. But I think this one might be a 1-1 draw. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below ahead of the game. And uh, the top four race, where do you see it going? Who do you think is going to finish fourth? Will Arsenal get their default place of fourth? Or can Manchester United upset that and send the Arsenal fans into absolute meltdown? Wouldn't that be funny? Because I think out the two, out of Manchester City and Arsenal, Arsenal are actually playing the worst football, although they have a slightly easier run in than, uh, than uh, Manchester City, because Manchester City have got to play Southampton. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll talk to you all again soon. See ya.